More than 700 people have now died of swine flu across India since January, most of them in Rajasthan and Gujarat. The government at the centre says there's no need to panic. But on the ground, awareness about swine flu is sorely lacking. The issue has also become very politicised, with the Congress accusing the government of criminal negligence and just not doing enough. This effort at awareness, perhaps too little, too late. That too in a state that has seen the highest number of deaths from the start of this year. The number of dead across the country has now crossed the 700 mark, prompting the cabinet secretary to chair a review meeting of health officials from 17 states. It is mostly those cases where treatment was not uh, taken or given in time and people did not go to the affected patients, did not go to the uh, primary health centre or to the doctor. So there's really no need to panic at all. There have been many messages asking people not to panic, but it hasn't matched up in terms of awareness drives. Even in states of Gujarat and Rajasthan, door-to-door -door campaigns only started last week, even though these two states have seen the maximum number of deaths due to swine flu. In the remote area, the IC activity has a risk. That is the reason uh, people were not aware, even doctors were not aware that this is taking such a step. Even in Gujarat, despite a government order asking private hospitals to reserve 10% beds for swine flu cases, the measure hasn't been implemented yet. But even more than awareness drives and late diagnosis, what's alarming are statements like these. Swine flu, Especially when they come from those who direct the state health machinery. Government after government is high on assurances that it is doing everything to control the spread of the H1N1 virus. But as the death toll mounts, there will be more questions on whether it has been caught napping on tackling a virus that's not even new to the population. With Harsha Kumari Singh in Jaipur and Muridipa Banerjee in Kolkata, in New Delhi, Keith Kiangre for NDTV. The question then is whether India is unprepared to deal with swine flu. We've got Dr. Randeep Guleria, Professor and Head of the Department of Pulmonary Medicine at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Dr. Naveen Dang, Director of Dr. Dang's lab here in Delhi, also here in the studio. And our political panel also stays with us tonight. Dr. Guleria, let me ask you first. Do you believe that the levels of awareness are adequate? And I say this tonight, uh, you know, after just hearing what Mamta Banerjee said that, you know, mosquitoes uh, pass on the swine flu. There was also the mayor of Mumbai who has uh, said that uh, heart disease, it, it's a heart disease, swine flu is a heart disease and we're going to plant more trees so that everyone is better. That really worries people, you know, when people in authority talk like this. So are the levels of awareness sufficient? Obviously they're not yeah. with the statements like this coming through. I think it's very important for everyone to understand how the disease is transmitted. It has got nothing to do with mosquitoes. It's an airborne droplet infection. And influenza has been there for, I would say, centuries. We, and it's a disease which has been there for a very long time. We've got a new strain which came in 2009, which was the pandemic H1N1. Unfortunately, it got the name swine flu, which has got nothing to do with swine. It is a wrong name, but somehow it's lashed on in India. It's a common influenza virus, which came in 2009 as a new virus. Over the last five, six years, it's become a seasonal influenza virus. Every year, because of the cases, it's the circulating strain which is present in the community. Now, influenza does kill. We all know, even in the US, uh, every year, almost 40,000 people die because of influenza, despite the fact that they have a very aggressive vaccination policy and they are uh, treating their patients very aggressively. But it does cause mortality, especially those... What is the difference between the swine flu and a regular cold? A so regular that's flu. a very important thing to understand. First of all, swine flu is just seasonal influenza. It's not different from uh, the regular fl uh, flu that you get. Important issue to understand is that in most patients, the flu is li limited to the upper airways. You have a running nose, sore throat, headache, fever, body aches. And normally with just symptomatic treatment, within five to seven days, it goes away. But there is a small group of patients where this flu spreads down into the chest. So from the upper airways, it goes down in the trachea into the lungs, causes pneumonia. And this causes breathing difficulty, the, there is cough, there is phlegm in the cough, there is chest pain. And so that's the key difference. So you have to be aware of the warning signs. So what is really important is that individuals understand what are the warning signs. And if they have these warning signs, if they find that their fever is not going down on the fourth, fifth day, 
they're suddenly becoming out of breath, they have a lot of cough with phlegm, the child is becoming drowsy, not accepting feed, is unresponsive or in the elderly again there is a drowsiness, uh, there is altered mental state. These are those patients who you have to seek immediate test. medical advice and I would say that if they have a flu-like symptom, don't even wait for your test results, start the treatment. You know sometimes what happens is they wait for 48 hours for the results to come and then if the results are positive, so just start then the medication, even if, if you have a, a strong clinical yeah. suspicion and there is features, Don't the warning the signs test, are there, the earlier you start the treatment, the better will be the response, the better will okay. be the treatment. I have more questions for you because so uh -huh. many people have been writing in and calling in on this, but Dr. Dan, are we prepared? I mean, as a country, is our health infrastructure prepared to deal with this kind of uh, an outbreak? Is it definitely no. We are not prepared. Because the first time we experienced this particular epidemic, if I may call it the inverted commas epidemic, was in the year 2009. That time a kind of fear was created. Few centers, few private labs, government hospitals were kind of equipped to handle this. But over time, the number of centers handling this particular kind of situation has remained static. Over time, we should have invested more in this. Yes. But again, uh, I will not totally blame the government for it. The fact means that nobody expected that our, after 2009, we had a few spurt of cases in 2011, that again we'll have in such a magnitude, in such a large extent, certainly in 2015. So uh, we can call it bad luck. But yes, of course, scientifically speaking, we should have been better prepared. And rather, we should be better prepared for all the mutated viruses, which can be coming any time. Last month, we were talking about Ebola virus. There, there was some other virus, some other virus, something like that. But do you like believe that, that then there's enough information? Yes. I, I mean, that's the other key thing. Mm. That Do you think people are, are, are panicking because there's just not enough awareness uh, out there about what the difference is between swine flu and a regular flu? Like what Randeep rightly said, even the people at the helm of our society are not aware how swine flu is caused, how influenza virus is caused, how it spreads, spreads what are the precautions to be taken, when should the test be done, what kind of test should be done, so, so there is absolute total lack of information, there is total lacuna which is there. No, so that I'll, take that, I'll, t I'll take that to Nalin. Nalin, I mean you are not the health minister, but I do remember and I will say this uh, publicly that you know when, when the Ebola scare was happening, Dr. Harshwardhan when he was the health minister actually was on almost every TV channel, you know telling people not to panic, this is what the government is doing, spelling it out. We haven't really, you know, apart from a few sound bites, had the health, the current health minister do a full-fledged press conference every day at a certain time and say, this is the update, don't worry, you know, this is what's going on, or if not him, at least the health secretary. You know, at least a regular daily briefing to keep people informed. Well, that, that would have made that a big could, difference. Well, I mean, that could be a suggestion. On the other hand, what is well known and it's documented also is that everybody's working on it. It's not as if things are not happening. There was a scare two days ago about uh, the lack of the drugs then it was clarified that there is no shortage per se, there's movement. What we need to bear in mind is the government is working. It is, after all, a disease and it's not coming out of any political office. So we need to, what we have to do is immediately take steps. And if the minister and his staff are working on it, information is coming out too. So I don't think we can make a political case out of this. No, it's not about a political case, but I'm only asking you that don't you believe that the government... Well, it's a suggestion. As I said, it's a suggestion. But given the priority of in terms of monitoring it and working and taking decisions, for example, video conferencing is happening with the states. The problem is most of the cases are in the states. It's not in Delhi per se, in, in that kind of quantity, whether it's Rajasthan or the Gujarat. But the information Gujarat. has to right, from absolutely. the Absolutely. It's part of it. So you put it down. We have just seen an example of what the information system could be also in terms of political leadership. But by blame gaming or anything, nothing is going to be achieved. You still have to keep working. And that's what the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare is supposed to do. Dr. Ajay Kumar, is it, uh, I mean, is it necessary to politicize it? Because the Congress has jumped into this, accusing the government of criminal negligence. And it has now become a highly politicized issue. Is it necessary for it to be that? <coughs> Nidhi, sorry. Nidhi, you know, uh, I, it's, not, it's not being politicized at all by the Congress. The facts are, you know, in 2014, there were 200 deaths and 987 recorded cases. In 2015, there were around 10,000 cases and over 700 deaths. And even in terms of communication, so a couple of requests. One is that the government, you know, is woefully uh, in, ill prepared to counter it because this started in December when, you know, incidences started happening in Telangana. But the com government, central government company, deterred and dotted on this issue. And our request, Nalin, our request is instead of you know, so much of uh, messaging on other uh, issues from the government side, you know, let us focus and 
make a detail to how to counter this H1N1 uh, epidemic because it's an epidemic. The other issue is like the US declares it as in a state of emergency. When they declared it as an emergency, there was a remarkable reduction in the cases. Thailand didn't do it and Thailand had a huge rate of mortality. So it's an epidemic, it's a national emergency, all, uh, all resources should be to fight it. I think it's not political, but the way the government is responding is very woefully inadequate and not vaccinating the uh, health workers who are, you know, liable to get infected. Okay, wait, so the doctors on the panel are Nalan disagreeing the with some of the yeah. things you've said, though. Uh, let me just get their quick comments, Dr. Guleria and Dr. Dang. Yeah, first of, yeah. of all, you know, by definition, it's not an epidemic. Yes, exactly. That is you one. think that that's an exaggeration yes. and creates Secondly, panic? Secondly, all, I mean, if you, if, even if you look at influenza over the years, and there is now data from ICMR, from National Institute of Virology, Pune, there are waxing and waning, waning periods. You will have years when you have large number of cases and you will have years where the number of cases is less. And that's a natural history. If you look at even dengue in Delhi, there were times when dengue is in large numbers and there are years when dengue is less. So it's not something which is not known. This is a normal course of an infection. So you're saying which don't, don't create panic, Dr. Dan. I was exactly going to say what Randeep has just now said. One, it is not an em uh, epidemic. Number two, it should not be treated as an emergency. Number three, all of us are on the same side of the fence. It cannot be politicalized. We have to only look at the welfare of the patients. That can be done by further strengthening our government hospitals, by involving the public and private sector both, and work hand in but hand you together. Know why, you know why, uh, Raghav Chadha, uh, you know, people will, people will panic and people will ask questions and they will worry and they will think it's an emergency because of the lack of information mm -hmm. and awareness. And, you know, like I said, if I a chief minister of a state can say a mosquito gives it to you, then we have something to worry about. Raghav. Certainly, Nidhi, while I believe that this issue should not be politicized and no political representative should uh, you know, uh, make an attempt at scoring cheap political brownie points. Uh, but let me say this, that Dr. Harsh Vardhan, who was the Union Health Minister uh, before uh, Mr. Nadda, was a much more communicative minister. Regular press releases via PIB, etc. used to come out and there was far more uh, you know, level of uh, awareness. I agree with you. And that also helps in averting panic. That's one. Number two, as far as the Aam Aadmi Party government is concerned and the Aam Aadmi Party is concerned, we fundamentally believe that this situation, in this situation, both the central government and the respective state government need to work hand in hand in order to tackle this uh, pandemic, which is at this point not an epidemic. And as far as my government is concerned, as the health minister today in his press uh, briefing rightly said that he's, our government has been proactive, uh, though we've been in office only for three days. We have, you know, put a cap on the uh, pricing of the uh, examination Test. of swine flu. We have made sure that medicines are uh, available at various locations across the city. And we've also installed a helpline. So we are trying our level best uh, in order to ensure that this does not spread. And, uh, and I have hoped that the central government also uh, picks up some ideas from the kind of uh, implementations that they've seen by okay. the Amadmi Party. Ajay Kumar had a quick, quick comment before Nidhi, I come yeah. back to the doctors. Yes. You, you know, Nidhi, I just, I just want to check with Dr. Guleria then what would be a, you know, an epidemic when uh, in two months' time you have over 700 deaths and 10,000 patients? The question is, whatever you name it, it's a serious issue. I don't think Dr. Dang and Dr. Guleria will walk away from it. You can't say it's a natural process. And you cannot say that we are prepared or we are communicating adequately. So, either way, you know, you cannot say it's business as usual, people will continue to die. So, I totally disagree on that because they are governments which respond more adequately get people onto the hospitals on time, treat them well. So it is a serious issue. So I, unless I, you know, misunderstood but you know, what Dr. Right Guleri and Dr. Dang are saying. Let's back to that. Let's see the health minister more proactive well, and okay, tell people as that I there's said, nothing to worry look, about. I, if there I, I'm not going to allow pot shots against Mr. Nadda because he's actually doing his job. He may not it's be. Also be hold on. Yes, of course, it may be. But no. What's but you going are, on? But you, for example, I'm trying to say this. So I tried to speak with Mr. Nadda, and I was told he was holding meetings. He basically, he was trying to. Be, he was holding meetings on this Why very issue. Why can't the health secretary do it a better press? Well, I mean, the press, Well, as I said, they are working, and it's all documented. They are working with the states. It's a suggestion. Nobody's rejecting Last that suggestion. But in terms of it, I think the politicization of it is risky. For example, I'm a little uh, wary of uh, the Congress Party being the new agency. Okay of defining what an epidemic will be or a pandemic will be and whether there are vaccine or waning periods. We need to leave that to those who understand this. We can bicker about our political things, but let's not start doing politics on something that needs to be treated okay, much more let, differently. Let me just ask then, Dr. Guleria, two important questions. Though. One, a lot of people want to know that, uh, you know, when you say it's seasonal, does the swine flu go away when it gets warmer? It does. Uh, what happens when the temperatures change? Yeah, so let me explain this to you. And there is now a data which is there for more than 15, 20 years for influenza, which includes swine flu. We classically have two peaks in the tropical countries like India. We have a peak in the winter months and we have a monsoon peak. 
unlike the US where they only have a winter peak. So, we have more number of cases now as the temperature rises the cases will come down because the survival of the virus in the environment becomes less and then when the humidity rises during the monsoon months we will again see more cases and this has been happening for, for a number of years. The number of cases is actually rising because of two things. Influenza was initially not diagnosed. Now, we are doing tests much more often than we were doing for influenza before 2009. We would label so all of this as viral fever. So, yeah. if you start testing more, you will pick up more cases. So, you are saying as the temperatures rise, the number of cases are, should, should actually come down. Come down. It will My come last down. question though then is, there is a lot of talk about a, a, a vaccine uh, and a swine flu vaccine. Now, uh, what is it? Should people get it? Yes. Is it worth getting? Now, what, the, the, the current influenza vaccine which has been available for since last year covers for swine flu. So, the influenza vaccine which are being marketed by 3, 4 companies does have a cover for, for H1N1 long? pandemic and the current data suggest that the match between the circulating virus and the vaccine is very good. So, the coverage the protective value is almost up to 70 to 80 percent even higher. And for how long? It is an annual vaccine because okay. the virus Once keeps on changing. Yeah. So, the, the, the thing about the virus is it keeps on what we call an antigenic drift. So, it drifts a little bit and the efficacy of the virus comes in. That is why I but said is the it match worth is good. It? Is it worth getting now, a swine flu shot? Now, the issue and this has ha happened in the past. I once went all the way to Chennai because the government of Tamil Nadu decided everyone in Tamil Nadu should be vaccinated because they had a few cases. Of, okay. This is not this year, this was two or three years ago. It is not practical, it does not make sense. We have to identify and prioritize our vaccine. Currently, the issue is that all healthcare workers who are dealing with patients they should be vaccinated. They should be vaccinated because if they get the illness, they are going to be sick. Is it sick. expensive? The vaccine is just 400, 500 rupees. The but other like important we, issue like which people, people don't people don't understand things, why, why healthcare workers should be vaccinated is suppose I get flu and I am working in the ICU and I am coughing in the ICU. I will give that flu to my Somebody patients else. on a ventilator yeah. and he will probably die if he gets a secondary influenza uh, illness. So, the vaccination is not only to prevent, uh, protect the healthcare workers. But you don't workers, recommend it for, for regular folks, otherwise, uh, you know, only high risk, measure. risk patients, patients who are ex elderly or those who have underlying comorbid conditions like diabetes, chronic lung disease, because they are more prone to get a more serious infection. Okay, all right. Well, I have to leave it at that uh, this evening. It's uh, been important to get ca clarifications from the doctors in particular uh, on, on what are the symptoms are, how the swine flu is different from a regular flu and, and uh, what, what some of the do's and don'ts are. Thank you very much to all of you for joining us tonight. Uh, we're just going to return to our top story uh, on that uh, leak from the oil ministry and the espionage that the Delhi police has been talking about with five arrests that have been made in the case. My colleague Shweta Rajpal Kohli, in fact, has just spoken to the oil minister Dharmendra Pradhan. Let's listen to what he said. Clearly, we've seen an unprecedented move. Uh, many of us who've covered the oil ministry know that this has been happening for years. What led to this big move happening? Why did it happen that finally we are seeing that arrests have been leaked and documents have been leaked? Look, what is arrest and what is going on is that this is all investigating agency and police work. We had a lot of people in the ministry and some problems that there is a lot of people that are happening. इसीलिए निगरानी रखने वाले संस्थाओं को और संबंधित लोगों को सूचना थी। तो मिनिस्ट्री ने अलर्ट किया था पुलिस को। स्वाभाविक इस विषय पर हम लोगों को पहले से ही अंदेशा थी कि इस प्रकार की कुछ घटनाएं हो रही हैं और हो सकती हैं इस प्रकार की अनुमान लग रहा था। कुछ खबरें जिसे बाहर कभी-कभी आती थी, सरकार ने उस विषय पे एक मत रखा है कि स्वतंत्र शासन के लिए एक निष्पक्ष शासन के लिए इस प्रकार की चीज अच्छा नहीं है और लॉ शुड टेक इट्स ओन कोर्स किसी को उसमें से अगर एजेंसी गुनेगार साबित करती उनको कानून के हिसाब से सामना करना पड़ेगा ये एक एक तरीके से कॉर्पोरेट एस्पियोनाज कहा जा रहा है ये भी कहा जा रहा है कि बड़ी बड़ी तेल कंपनियां इन्वॉल्व हैं टॉप एनर्जी कंपनीज टॉप इंडस्ट्रियल हाउसेज ऑफ द कंट्री इन्वॉल्व वुड यू लाइक टू शेयर विद अस दैट हु कुड हैव बीन द बेनिफिशियरीज एंड वाज दिस अ नेक्सस बिटवीन कंपनीज एज वेल एज ऑफिशियल्स एंड इवन सम जर्नलिस्ट देखो ये उचित नहीं होगा किसी को इस प्रकार की सब्जेक्टिव एनालिसिस करना मैं तो नहीं कर सकता हूं लेकिन जो संबंधित संस्था है investigating agency it is their job to look into the details I, I hope they will find out the, who are the person behind the all such uh, nuisance and they will find out 
but so it's now common knowledge that uh, within minutes of say a presentation being made by an oil company in 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 the ministry the presentation would be leaked out and even there were there are there are people who had based their business model on the fact that there were leaked government papers from the oil ministry was this actually deterring the investment climate foreign investors coming and talking to you and other top officials what actually prompted why why is it that the government decided to alert and take such a hard position on something which has been in many ways common knowledge i have already clarified um, uh, to give free and fair governance this kind of thing are detrimental this 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 kind of thing are in democracy this kind of thing are unfortunate as i told you my prime minister my government is very clear on one issue zero tolerance towards any kind of corruption so this is a fall out investigating agencies are there on their job they will find out the truth whoever they may be they will be within the law Oil Minister Dharmendra Pradhan speaking to my colleague Shweta in the last few minutes. We'll take a break. Coming up after that, the Greenpeace activist at the centre of the storm with the central government Priya Pillay joins us. Has she been an unfair target by the Ministry of Home Affairs? That's after the break. <laughs>